Sabino Canyon is one of the most popular hiking and recreation areas in southern Arizona. Yeah, for more than a century, Tucsonans have made their way into the Catalina foothills to picnic and play in the scenic canyon, making it absolutely Arizona. It was kind of stunning. That was the reaction David Wentworth Lazaroff had the first time he ever saw Sabino Canyon. It was 1977. He had just moved from the Bay Area to start his job with the National Forest Service at Sabino Canyon. Just to see you know, these enormous, uh, beautiful slopes with saguaros. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we live for a while. We get used to it. Sure. What's it like the first time you see it? It's 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 startling and stunning. So taken by Sabino Canyon. Lazaroff became an environmental education specialist for the Coronado National Forest, passing along his knowledge of the unique canyon nestled in the Santa Catalina Mountains. It's interesting on so many levels. I mean, it's interesting geology, the biology is great, fascinating, mm -hmm. um, but the human history came to dominate my interests in it, and that's a whole dimension of Sabino Canyon I wanted to open up. Lazaroff just published his third book on Sabino Canyon, Picturing Sabino chronicles a century of the recreation area from 1885 to 1985. Imagine in 1885 traveling by carriage or on horseback to reach the canyon. It took hours. Yeah. And you stopped. The halfway point was Fort Lowell. Right. You stopped at Fort Lowell almost always. Then you came on up here and just spent most of the day and came back at the end of the yeah. day. Lazaroff points out that in 1885, not many knew about Sabino Canyon or what to expect. So they got together in large groups, because I'm sure because they felt safer. You'll notice the 1880s visitors to Sabino Canyon were all dressed up. Women in their sundry vest, long dresses, fancy hats wading in the creek. I mean, how, you can't beat that. According to Lazaroff's research, the remarkable beauty of Sabino Canyon was threatened several times during its early history. Colonel C.P. Sykes claimed to have found gold here in 1892. He formed a company called the Sabino Gold Mining Company and claimed, uh, I guess it was 10 mines in all. And um, then the whole thing just vanished, it disappeared. You can still see one of those mines at the end of Rattlesnake Canyon near the first shuttle stop. Sykes also named a famous landmark in Sabino Canyon, Sykes Observatory. Today, we know it as Thimble Peak. Around the turn of the last century, there were plans to dam the upper portion of Sabino Canyon. The idea was to pump water down to Tucson to help alleviate a major drought in the early 1900s. Fortunately for the future of Sabino Canyon, it never happened. A small dam was built in lower Sabino Canyon near the end of the Great Depression. During the Depression, many of the bridges were built over Sabino Creek as part of a government works project. Cars were allowed to drive up the canyon through the 1950s and 60s. The first shuttle began operating in June of 1978 with cars only allowed in the lower Sabino Canyon. Cars were finally banned in 1981. Today, the electric Sabino Canyon crawler is the only vehicle allowed, helping reduce pollution in the canyon. It takes you on a seven mile round trip to the top of the canyon and back. While no one can question the beauty of Sabino Canyon, there is some question surrounding the name. In Lazaroff's new book, he debunks a common misconception. This Sabino Canyon was not named for a wealthy rancher. As it turns out, there is another canyon named Sabino Canyon, and it's way off west of Tucson. That one was named for Sabino Otero. Others have suggested it was named for the Spanish word Sabino or a reddish colored horse grazing in the canyon. Sabino is also a local Spanish word for juniper or cypress trees which grew in the canyon in the 1800s. If there had been even just one of those trees, like, you know, like a big Christmas tree standing out, people would have said, that's the canyon with the Sabino in it, Sabino Canyon. Regardless of how it got its name, Sabino Canyon is a real Tucson treasure. With more than a half million visitors each year, it's one of the most visited recreation areas in the state. David, I want to thank you for taking me down this journey with you in your book. Sabino Canyon's absolutely Arizona, and we appreciate your time. All right, I got one more story for you about the tragic 1948 death of a deputy sheriff falling to his death during a rescue in Sabino Canyon. A star photographer, a daily star photographer, got the moment that happened, the horrific mm -hmm. moment, later appeared in Life magazine. It was a famous wow. couple of photos. Mm -hmm. That photographer, Sam Levitz. Wow. That's right, the furniture guy and Jeez. the business 
that he took over after he gave up his career as a young wow. photographer. Yeah, yeah. That's so amazing. There's one for you. And, yeah. and in, in case you're wondering, what, what did Sabino, how did they, Sabino really get his name? I really think it was the the tree, and people saw the tree. I think that's that's what he thought. Sounds as like well. that would be the most logical. Exactly, way exactly. To go. All yeah. I can think about when you showed me the pictures of the dresses and yes. the nice hats was thinking I could never. <laughs> I mean, it is just the weather does not it's call for lot. that. Could it's you a imagine lot. being a hundred degrees and going up I, there? I want to see you all geared up in your formal <laughs> wear. Oh gosh. Yeah, up there. Only going you guys are there. taking me in an AC car and like close up, <laughs> which isn't allowed. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 